you guys. Dr. John's soap today with a Gillette Silver Blue blade. The blade's going to go in this, a Monotech or an Aristocrat. I believe it's the Monotech. It's a Brazilian made Gillette. And it looks very, the head is very similar to uh, many of the Super Speed style, but the handle is different. This one's got a little bit of a, a dingy, I don't know if that's rust. I, I just got it in. It's a user grade razor from Shave HQ. I got a good deal on it, probably because of that discoloration and and a little bit of plating loss on on a corner there. But we'll get to see how it shaves. And um, I've I've ordered a couple of razors from there. He's got this new technique, this new thing. Instead of um, putting razors out in a typical shopping cart fashion, where he's got pictures of them and descriptions and stuff which I imagine is very time consuming. He just put out a Google spreadsheet that you can look at, scroll through it, find what you want, order it pretty, pretty easy. That way he can keep that information current very easily. Why not? Why not? And lastly, the B23 from Zenith, something I've been using lately because I want to get some uses on it. And we are at 19 uses after this shave. And that means he's just a few uses away from catching up with all the other bores that we have in our kind of bore-a-thon. I, I do want to take one Samoog out of the mix. I don't know which one yet because I've just got so many. They're developing slowly because we've got so many in the rotation. It takes a while to cycle through them. All right. It's been 24 hours since my last shave, so that part's kind of normal and standard and this is going to be about the fifth shave of this Gillette silver blue blade nice um, nice sound as I open this up you probably put it in an ultrasonic cleaner or something like that I have never used uh, oh and we got some plating loss underneath the uh, uh, on the fear rule here and uh, even the side of the head this is this don't these don't come around very often so your the price is probably going to reflect that if you were to find one in really good condition but the the grip feels really good it's definitely not going to slip around it's got that knurling it's got the vertical uh, patterns etching as you can see but then it's also got the horizontal this is not something we have in the American uh, super speeds or uh, you know aristocrats and things like that I believe my Reese I did a little bit of research on this this one is a C3 so that's third quarter manufactured third quarter of the year and C is 1957 or it's in the 70s and with this I'm sorry with the 80 in the 80s with this design it looks like it's more likely to be the 1957 version so uh, the Material also seemed to indicate that this could be named the Aristocrat or the Monotech. And the Aristocrat maybe is the one in gold and the one in silver or rhodium type color is the Monotech. So we'll just call it the Monotech for the purposes of this shave. But in the description of the video, I'm going to try to include Aristocrat if I can fit all the characters in there until I find out what it is for sure i uh, decided to go with dr strangelove because man this the aldehyde scent that's in here is oh and some of the other pieces of this scent i just i, I can smell this all day long it's so interesting i love it get my face wet all right let's load up i think the brush has been soaking now for maybe half an hour could be an hour i, I kind of lost track shake out the water some of it and it's unfortunately been a while since I used this soap we've got some shrinkage but that's okay it should perform just fine and 40 seconds is rolling around right there what how long should I load this guy for let's just kind of play it by ear uh, right 
there is 20 seconds. Let's just try 30. The puck is rotating a little bit, but hopefully not. Well, in that sense, the puck is rotating some. I'm trying to squeeze the tin so that it clamps down on the puck. There we go. Looks like we've got some nice lather there, pre-lather. I think we got it what we needed. Took a little bit of the excess and kind of rubbed it around my face a little bit just to kind of break up the oils. And so with the B23, we will start to work on the building up the lather. Dr. John's is a vegan soap maker. Like Southern Witchcraft, his base is, in my opinion, very good regardless of the type of lather you're going to compare it to. They both compete, in my opinion, with tallow soaps. Very enjoyable, slick bases. And uh, I forgot to bring out my syringe. Nope, it's right here. Here it is. I just got a, kind of back from being somewhere else for the weekend. And so my a little bit out of my rhythm, haven't put all my pieces back in their usual place. Oh man, the scent of that, the aldehydes coming up. It's, you know, it's almost like a, a carbonated beverage, you know, a, a seltzer water, but with a little bit of flavor to it. Champagne kind of white grape type feel to it. Another teaspoon. Two in there total now. See the little peaks and points and sharp ridges? Those are some things to notice as you're building up your lather. When those, I like to add water until those start to disappear and you can definitely see a difference in the, in the lather. Since I'm really trying to break this brush in, I'm doing the longer soaks. Once it gets to 22 uses or so, I'm probably going to back off and not uh, soak for quite as long because I I want it to grow at this uh, similar rate to its other bore brushes because it's kind of what I why I'm doing it is to seek, compare how they all grow, how they all mature, how quickly they all become comfortable. The sterling bore that I have is being similar to this brush in the backbone department, but not as soft in the tip department. So this one is more enjoyable to use in that regard. The uh, Big Omega that I have, the 20102, is not as soft in the tip. Um, it's got longer bristles though, and so it beats this one. It's actually not bad in terms of backbone because of those longer bristles. But all the Samogs are very comfortable by this point. A couple of the Zeniths are, well, all the other Zeniths except for this one, 
are very comfortable, luxurious, and were quite a while ago. Whereas this one is more stubborn. See now we have less sharp ridges. As you can see we do have that little stand up peak in there. And uh, let's, let's just kind of feel the lather. It's creamy and slick. A very light cream kind of feel. Let us add just a little bit more water. We'll finish off the syringe. So that's four teaspoons and we'll go with that. I may be adding more water after this first pass, but we'll just try this out. With this brush having so much backbone, you I find that I don't like to err on the side of too wet because that doesn't that allows that backbone to really bother you a little bit and the potential to bother you. All right, give my face a rinse now. We can start working the lather in. Yeah, I can feel that backbone. Now, you do have animal hairs that vary by batch, and so it's possible that somebody else's B23 could be could give them a very different experience. This one's very scrubby. wouldn't want to use it because of that scrubbiness on a razor that I knew was maybe going to make my skin a little tender. Lather's well, feeling good. It looks like I might need to add a little bit of water to it, but because of this brush, I think I'm going to keep it dry. So what I'm going to do is just give my face a little extra scrub time to, to get this lather to really connect with it because it needs to be able to kind of sink into the, this is just the way it feels to me, the way it seems like it's working. It needs to, this is not scientifically proven at all, it needs to kind of bond and work its way into the top layers of skin to be able to provide that lubrication and therefore protection. Nice and creamy lather we have here. Now sometimes when you when you have a lather that looks like, hey, you add some water, you could add a little bit and then it wets it down. Makes it a little bit less creamy. Sometimes add a little bit of water and it it activates the lather somehow it shifts it into a different gear and instead of sitting down it puffs up and volumizes and becomes slick and creamy and wonderful all at the same time and so sometimes you just have to you know try it to see if the lather is going to do that Tech. How about that? The center of gravity is about right there. So it is a little head heavy. 
little bit of audio. It's using the Gillette Silver Blue comfortably, and it seems to be cutting well. So this, this does feel like the same shave I get from the kind of standard American super speeds. A lot of times the international version of a Gillette, especially when it is the British version, will actually shave a lot better than its American counterpart. I was curious now I might have to bring out a typical super speed the flare tip now the 40s style super speed shaves a little smoother than this guy but I, when I say super speed in comparison with this I'm talking about the flare tips all right that went well Looks like it's kind of medium aggression. And let me rinse. Sometimes Dr. John's doesn't get a lot of air time. It's a thirsty soap often. It may not be quite as easy to lather as for some people. As the barrister and man type bases. No blood or holy cow declaration grooming, those guys. But I really like them. It's a very hard soap. It's going to last you a good long time. And this lather is tremendous. It felt really good on my skin as I was rinsing. I like the creativity of the scent profiles that he puts together. He, his general philosophy on all that is very different, I would assume, from the existing guys, which is great. He brings something unique to the table as he designs his stuff. Cross grain now. Definitely got some scents from him that I think are creative and unique, really enjoyable. I wonder if I should try to stretch, reach back, pick up some of those neck hairs from certain areas on the side of my neck that might help my personal grooming to step up a little bit more just kind of reach back and pick a few of those guys off every shave otherwise I look like a wolf man back there and we can see if there's some nope not a lot of Goatee lather this time that pass. I'm, I'm liking the razor. It is. I do like the look better. The flare tips, while I appreciate the practicality of having a little bulbousness to the tip for this type of stroke where you're holding it at the end and you're reaching back toward the opposite side, that's a, a style of holding that I often use in, in that area. And it's very practical, very nice for that. But visually, I, I definitely like this handle better than just the straight style. And I guess that's why it's uh, named the Aristocrat, because the Aristocrats have had the, uh, the straight uh, design of the, the adjustment knob, that sort of thing. And let's rinse. The feel during the rinses here is different than a lot of other lathers. It's almost buttery. As I'm, it's it's slick, but it's got a little bit of a buttery nature to it. Almost uh, 
a slight bit of uh, cushion or extra consistency to it. But then if you keep rinsing, it does minimize and go away. If you, uh, but that might be the moisturizers that he has put into this soap. I'm guessing he might have done that. This might be the volume two. I don't know if Strange Love is in the volume three or not. I don't think it says so on the jar. Last pass. I am getting good glide with the razor, so I got that going. Just lay down with painting strokes now. A nice little layer. And you can see how this brush just really likes to stay vertical. So when you move it around, it really likes to stay together like that. Now here we've managed to extract some of that lather. Let's take a take a feel. Yeah, that's just creamy, a very light. Uh, I probably would assume that it was vegan if I did a blind feel test for it. Slight bit of, I think we're still in the area of creaminess with this uh, ratio of water and soap. And now let's get that third pass off. A little bit of blade feel. But right now on the third pass, it is comfortable. So the soap, the lather is doing its job. I'm not hearing very many hairs cut. So that's a good sign. And now we will switch around on this side over here. I will do this as normal. And then what's left in white is my tricky spot. Really light. Yeah, there we go. I had to be careful. If I would have pulled too much in this direction, it would have started to get against the grain. Feels good. Slight bit of tenderness, and so you can tell there's a that's that medium aggression, and and since it's being a little noisy, we know that it's not clamping down on the blade super tight, right close to the blade on from the top and the bottom. But I think it's a nice middle ground. It doesn't it doesn't make me want to not use it uh, like some really noisy ones do. And I think, uh, and it would also be fine if someone were, uh, I think it would match a person who likes a little bit of noise as well. It's not so quiet that it would alienate them as well. I think in between the two types of people, the people who like it quiet and smooth and the people who like that audio, I think this guy's sitting kind of right in the middle. Now this lather is not a strong scent you get a good nose full when you put your nose in the bowl, but it, it, it's more um, subdued when you're actually using it. You definitely get it in the nose, but, but it's, it's more mild. I think it's just terrific. I could use it to be a little bit stronger while it's on my face, but not really a big deal. All right, so how much do we have left over? You know, a couple of passes. I'd probably do two passes out of that easily. So that's about the right amount. So loading for 40 seconds was, was a good idea this time. And 40 seconds with four teaspoons of water used was the ratio today. And here's what this B23 looks like after a very vigorous towel strop. Um, spread it out with my fingers manually as much as it would go just to promote drying is my theory might be a good idea I will continue to pack things up so 
Uh, how do I feel? It's a pretty good, pretty good razor. I like the looks, I like the feel, the balance. I told you it was a little head weighted, but during the shave, the the slight head weight I think works very well because that is going to be dragging just a tiny bit as you're moving it around. And so I did not feel the head weightedness at all. And so it, uh, in the actual shaving process, the balance was just fine. The grip was perfect, as you would imagine, from this kind of knurling. I think it's attractive. Um, if, you, if you like this look, but you want just plain knurling and a smoother shave than the 40s style, Super Speed is for you, and it will be easier to obtain and a lot cheaper, maybe even just 10 bucks on eBay. So you know what this razor feels like to the in terms of blade to face, uh, in terms of aggression. It kind of feels like the U.S. aristocrat. Not the English, but the U.S. The English ones are smoother, and that kind of works out because you know this is the Brazilian aristocrat, or at least this is what if it was gold, I think it would be the Brazilian aristocrat, and so if you were to take this razor and fatten up this handle that you would get the u.s aristocrat and so it, it makes sense that it would in, in terms of visually speaking and so it makes sense that it would also echo that same heritage in terms of blade feel that sort of thing because with uh, this is probably just a in my memory searching back how the aristocrat felt the U.S. aristocrat, this feels a little smoother, but I'm just, I'm reaching, really reaching there. All right. It was a nice shave that was fairly kind to my face. I don't feel any tenderness right now uh, of any consequence, really. I feel just, just a tiny bit in the neck area, really very small amount, almost not even worth mentioning. I'm going to follow today's shave with my Thayer's alcohol-free, unscented, witch hazel type of tonic that they have. And I like to spray it in my hand because then it doesn't drip out because the water droplets divide a little bit more. Also makes it nice and convenient. All right. Unlike alum, which hazel does not need to be rinsed off. If you do use alum after a shave as your astringent, then make sure you rinse that off because it is a salt. It's not table salt, but it's a salt, and so it does need to be rinsed off of your face. Uh, closeness was pretty nice today. Not quite as nice as the Wolfman has given me last couple of shaves, but this one was uh, uh, very good. The Wolfman was probably a little smoother, even with the nice sharp blade of yesterday. Uh, but this guy is going to cost a whole lot less than a Wolfman. And then the 40s style is going to cost way less than that. And it's going to, it, it's going to be more comfortable than that particular Wolfman because the uh, gap on that one just, uh, uh, and the blade that I'm, blades that I'm working on just aren't quite a, uh, a smooth combination yet. There's still um, uh, still some blade feel there, whereas the 40s style, man, that guy is just smooth. It's terrific. Uh, in terms of a, it does, yeah, you know what? I should create a list of smooth razors, do kind of a special video on those. Uh, some that jump to mind immediately are the low base plates of the carve razors. Even some of the open combs are very smooth there. It kind of fights against the um, misconception that all open combs are aggressive. Uh, game changer. Um, 68 is very smooth. Now for me, it's too smooth. But uh, for, for ones for me that I like, timeless 68, the scalloped bar and solid bar are both so nice. They cut really well, but they're so comfortable and smooth and the carve as well the um and then the fatips the carve and the timeless are kind of in the expensive zone 
Then we jump down to $25 and $30 with a uh, with the Fatips, that Testina Gentile, so buttery smooth, it's wonderful. And then uh, price can drop even down a little bit more than that, around the $10, $15 mark for that 40s style super speed. I should, I should make a good list, because that's one of my favorite genres of, of razors. See what else, um, kind of compile a list and kind of keep it in my brain. Since I enjoy that so much, that uh, that's that the smoothness while still being a good cutter. All right, well I'm done, and I think we're good, man. I, this scent, I tell you what, I kept it by my desk. Strange Love by Dr. Johns. I kept it by my desk when I first got it, and I just kept opening it up and smelling it. Oh, it's just so unique, so different. It's got a little bit of freshness to it, but it's mostly those aldehydes. Man, that is just terrific. All right, guys, um, that's it for me. And this is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I sure hope that this video has got something good for you. If you've never heard of or seen of the Brazilian uh, monotech slash aristocrat type of razor, then now you have, you know a little bit about it. Um, it is not as nice as the U as the UK versions of some of the Gillette razors, and I feel like if you're, I don't, I don't think you're missing anything. At least from my first impression, you're not missing anything in terms of the shave feel uh, when compared to our existing American Gillette versions that are very easy to obtain. Uh, the just the appearance is 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 what's different, uh, at least. Initially is what I'm thinking. All right. Nice piece. Pretty. Real pretty. Well designed in my opinion. Well, you guys take care. Have a good night.